For three months now, we've been making PPE to help people um, protect themselves, mostly face shields, and we took a long time to research how we could make 3D printed masks. Uh, we collaborated with other people, and we also collaborated with medical professionals and hospitals uh, in order to come up with a design and a process that is as safe as it can be uh, with a 3D printer made at home, basically. Um, so we posted the design of these masks on Thingiverse. Um, there's four sizes from S to XL. And what you need to finish the assembly is basically um, self-stick foam that you will use to put on the exterior edge and then weather sealing to put on the inside so that you can create a really good seal uh, with the face. Um, additionally, you'll need filter inserts. These are the ones that we've selected, but there's other options. And elastic bands so that it can um, like attach behind your ears or behind your head. Um, so what we have here is the shell of the mask and a filter grate that you can insert so that the filter material is pressed down and that you can breathe only through the front and the purpose is to seal the entire contour of the mask with additional material. Um, when you print this mask, the edges are going to be quite rough. So there's various ways to address this. Some people are sanding them, filing them. Um, what we are doing is using this material and I've got like packaged versions here. So this is uh, press on neoprene foam, which we use to stick on around the edge so that it gets rid of all the jagginess and it also provides a first layer of squishiness that will be complemented with the weather sealing um, on the inside so that there is a really good seal. The weather sealing itself, this version, um, works really well for sealing but doesn't stick that well which is why we have hot glue here in order to stick it afterwards to the shell. So. We're going to start with the neoprene foam. Um, I like to start off with cutting a perpendicular edge so that I have a reference point that I can go back to. Um, and what we'll do is we'll start here and then go all the way around and try to line it up like neatly so that it looks good. It's not that important that it's perfect because we will complement it with the weather sealing and uh, the hot glue. Um, so one thing to note about this particular product is that it's very sticky. It sticks really well. So once it's on there, um, it's kind of hard to take it back off. So you better get it right the first time. So what I do is I go all around the edge don't press too hard so that like, the adhesive can't bond that well yet. And try to sort of keep it in the center of the strip of foam that you're putting around. Once you're past the nose, I like to press it in first and work my way outwards from the nose because this is the area that can create folds or not line up well. So I press in from this side and then sort of work my way outwards and go all the way back to the beginning of where I started applying this foam. So that's one edge done with the nose done. And now I can work further to the beginning of where I I started applying this foam and I create a little overlap. This overlap is just for myself so that it's easier to work with later. So I can take this away. The overlap will not stick very hard, but it allows me to focus on the alignment later on. And again, the alignment is just for aesthetics. Um, it doesn't really m matter that much if you're perfect here. So you can see that I have this straight edge that I cut before, right here. So I'm trying to go back to it, fold this one over, and then I cut it sort of at the same location. 
so that I can align it here and then align it on the inside and get this almost seamless joint here. And now I can work my way back again and press really well so that the foam sticks to the shell as well as it can. So that is in order to get rid of the jagginess of the edges, primarily. The next thing that I do is I will go from the inside here to give some comfort to the nose in case you touch it here with your nose and also to uh, fill up this area with additional squishiness because that is where it's sometimes tricky to get the weather sealing right and then I will go all the way down the front because that helps with people that are wearing glasses um, so that they don't have glasses that rattle on a plastic shell. So again, I cut it off straight just to have a nice clean start. And I will align this with the beginning of the nose part. And go over and then try to align it neatly so that it's straight. And now I can fold it back and cut again. So those are the parts that are necessary. I like to complement this basically for aesthetics, but also, so don't forget to press on this part so that it bonds really well. But also for people who are wearing glass, I like to add one additional edge. And this is like inspired by someone who is doing only this particular part as um, foam or sealing material on the 3D printed masks. Um, we're going a step further after this. So I like to add this additional edge at the bottom here. Um, it keeps this one better in place and it gives an additional layer for people that are wearing glasses and I think it looks cool so that's why I'm doing it. So press down neatly again. So now we're done with the neoprene foam. The next step is we're going to start from the same location as where we applied the foam but with the weather sealing and we're going to first apply some hot glue, work our way to here, put the weather sealing down, work our way through here, put the weather sealing down, work our way through here with the foam and then we're going to have a tricky maneuver where you try to insert the weather sealing um, without pressing it down all the way but just sort of sliding it in. Um, I'm just giving you a heads up so that you know what will be going on. This weather sealing has a sticky side that is separated by some paper. Um, the sticky side, you can't rely on it. It will come loose um, uh, just after a few times of use or even just like with it laying around. So adding hot glue is really recommended. So I will add hot glue here to the bottom. Get that glue stick in properly. And I like to put the glue right at the edge of where I applied the neoprene foam um, so that it creates the joint there with the weather sealing strip. So the way I put this on is I try to really align it well with the edge of the mask because it will press down against your face, both on this side and on the inside also. So if you can get this really well aligned, you will have a very comfortable experience with this mask. So we did that first part that I was talking about. Now, let's go up to this particular curve of the nose. So I'm just putting down some more hot glue until here and then laying down the weather ceiling.
So what we're going to do now here, this is that tricky manu maneuver that I was talking about. Instead of pre trying to press the weather sealing in like this, which is tricky, we're going to fold it over and sort of slide it in from the side until you hit the edge and then expand it and go to the other side. This allows you to get as close as possible to this nose area and to avoid having any gaps there um, because you really don't want any gaps. Um, you want all the air to go through the filter that we will insert at the end. So I'm putting down more hot glue here and I will add quite a bit where that nose area is again and work my way to the next curve and then do that maneuver that I was talking about so I press it in from this side and then shift over to the other side like this and if you do it well you will have some glue that is coming out to the front here um, you can also have some glue like going to the inside. I usually leave that to dry out and then I peel it off later. Um, it sort of depends on how close you're able to get to the edge and how much glue you put on the shell. So let's now go to the next curve here, right here lay down a wetter ceiling again try to stay close to the edge of the mask so that you get that front facing seal properly done also okay so we're almost done with the wetter ceiling the final step is that we're going to cut it but a little bit too long like if you align it like this you can see that I cut it about four to five millimeters too long. So what we're going to do after we add the glue is we're going to shift this in like this and then press it down with the intent of actually pushing those two edges together and creating another seal together with the glue so that um, so all of this is airtight and that this is forced through compression of the weather sealing and the glue to be airtight also. So I'm going to lay down the glue here, add a little bit more where the joint is and then push that in. Okay, follow it and then I'll push it in from the side like this and try to align the edges so that they line up very neatly and you can see that there is a little bit of compression going on here which ensures that you have no air coming through on this end either um, certainly if you have this going underneath the chin um, because then there's a little bit more compression here uh, and that prevents any gaps so a final bit of inspection I just go around make sure that I touch the edges properly sometimes you can still rearrange it if the glue is still hot if you have any like spots of glue drops of glue that have dripped down um, it's good to take them out once this is dried up because they could be uncomfortable so we just applied all the foam and the weather sealing that we need the next step is to put in the filter so the filter that we chose to use um, has been particle tested by a few hospitals um, it's two types of filters the first one is so they're both air filters the first one is a MERV 16 filter um, and the other one is a MERV 13 graded filter. The MERV 16 variety sometimes has little fiberglass particles and obviously though you don't want to breathe that but they really filter out small particles like bacteria and viruses really well. Um, so that's why we have the MERV 13 on the inside 
to capture the fiberglass particles and make sure that those don't go through your airways. So we have the MERV 16 here. This is cut up in a four and a half by four and a half centimeter square. Um, you can put that in here. There you go. And then you take the MERV 13 filter and put it right on top of it on the inside. So now we've got our pair of air filters and we can use the grate to basically push down and have those being held in place. So there you go. So now we've got the filter here through which you will breathe the air and it's being held in place from the inside. You can take this back out after about 30 days of use if you don't get the filter sweat. Just press on the corner here and it will press on the inside of that grate. The grate will come out or you can use some pliers to take the grate out and you can replace the filter. So the last step is to provide some elastic band. We've got this elastic band here, um, which is a quarter inch. And basically we provide everyone with 14 inches of elastic band. Let's use this one. 14 inches for each side, so I basically measure it. roughly 14 inches, cut it, and some more here. And then people can decide how to attach it themselves, we just throw it in there. Finally, we have this information sheet that we provide that gives details about how to use the mask, how to disinfect it, why we decided on certain materials, and a disclaimer saying that we're just doing the best we can um, so that people can have more protection in times of COVID-19. But this has not been government approved nor officially tested in the lab. So we put that in here. There you go. Um, Finally, we printed out these strain reliefs so that people can decide to not have these elastic bands go behind the ears. So we put one of these in there. And that is it. Everything is neatly packaged in a Ziploc bag, ready to be used. I hope this is useful and thanks for watching. Bye.